Hey everyone, what makes a shot cinematic? Well, that's what this video is all about. Whatever camera setup you have, a DJI gimbal, a pocket camera, or a Dewing gimbal, everything that I'm going to talk about in this video is relevant to you and your videos. I'm going to ask, are these shots cinematic? And I've got five different shots to talk about. I'm going to get to gimbal shots later, but first let's talk about this roving shot. Let's say we're at a nice location, there's lots of cool things, and we want to show it all. And then we start recording and literally just film everything, with the camera just wandering around all over the place. Normally I would avoid this kind of shot, and there's two reasons for that. One, it's very messy and unfocused. Your audience doesn't know what they're supposed to be looking at because you're showing them everything at once. Two, you're showing everything from exactly the same angle and same position. So should we delete the roving camera shot from our list? Well, there is one situation that I can think of where it does actually work. And that's when we use it as a point of view shot. Perhaps a character in your video is looking for something, film a shot and show that, and then cut to the point of view shot. And this works because we're letting the audience see through the eyes of the person searching. Is it cinematic? Well, it is a storytelling method used in cinema. There's a famous movie called Peeping Tom, released in 1960, which was one of the first to use a point of view technique. But the film by British director Michael Powell was actually too disturbing for people at the time. And the reaction to it pretty much ruined his career. Later it was re-evaluated and is now widely considered a masterpiece. But anyway, that shouldn't stop you using the point of view shot. Okay, in this next bit, I'm gonna shoot a bunch of shots without any roving camera. And I'm gonna make sure to capture a separate shot for each subject that I want to show my audience. Okay, so here's what it looks like when I edit it together. But once we remove the roaming camera from the shot list, we might just go and capture every shot with the subject smack bang in the center of the frame. It can be the most obvious framing, but is it cinematic? Cinematographers often place the subject in different positions within the frame. For example, if you're filming someone walking, maybe put a space in front of them. And if you are filming a tree, put it to one side of the frame. Invite your audience to look past the tree, and you can use the tree as a decoration for your frame and to add depth to the image. But if the tree is in the center, there is no depth in the frame because your audience will simply look at the tree. And actually, by putting it in the center, you're basically telling them to look at it. So the conclusion would be that it's not a good idea to always have the subject in the middle. But here's a really interesting exception. When shooting the movie Mad Max Fury Road, director George Miller decreed that the actors be placed directly in the center of every frame. The reason for doing this was to enable faster paced editing. If the subjects appeared in different parts of the frame, every time there was a cut, 
the audience would have to spend time searching the screen for them. And to allow for this, the editor would need to slow the pacing of the movie. Putting the subject in the middle means you can speed up the pacing. Anyway, that's an idea that we can take for our own videos. So perhaps if we're intending to create a fast paced sequence, then maybe we should consider to place the subject in the center of the frame. Now everyone knows that a pan shot is cinematic, don't they? What is a pan shot anyway? We probably need to be clear what a pan shot is because I think sometimes people get confused because a pan shot is actually a very specific shot where the camera remains in the same spot and simply turns left to right or right to left. Not often this is done by mounting the camera to a tripod and turning the camera. With a smartphone or a smartphone in a gimbal or a DJI pocket type camera, we can just hold it in our hands and turn our body. Again, this is a very tempting shot to choose because it's easy to do and it captures a whole bunch of stuff in one shot. And of course, the pan shot is probably the most well-known shot amongst filmmakers and non-filmmakers. The problem with the pan shot, at least in my opinion, is that it's, it's rather mundane and it's kind of functional. The thing is that cameras used to be very big and heavy and if you couldn't afford the rig needed to move it around, then panning the camera on top of the tripod was often your only option. These days our cameras are much smaller and lighter and so there's less reason to use this boring old pan shot. With our gimbal or pocket cameras it's very easy to spice up a pan shot. And for that reason I'm going to cross the basic pan shot off of our cinematic shot list. But I'm not going to ban it completely. One way to make a pan shot more cinematic is to combine it with other movement. For example, a push in and pan is a very different shot to a pan where the camera is stuck in one place. So look at this shot from the movie Skyfall. The pan movement is combined with an upward movement at the end, and that makes this shot far more cinematic. And if I add an extension to my gimbal handle, I can capture something similar. What's the point of this shot? So what I'm talking about here is the focal point of the shot. When we're creating a focal point within a frame, we want to try to somehow isolate this object or person. We want to draw our viewer's attention to this point. So if we're talking about a person as a subject, we can use all kinds of strategies to achieve this. And here's a few you can try. One, use focus itself. If the background is out of focus, while the subject is in focus, this separates the subject from the background more. Two, use lighting. If the subject is more brightly lit than the background, again, this creates a separation. We can make the subject stand out more. And three, we can use things like leading lines. A leading line or lines in a frame are lines which lead our eyes to the subject. And we can use any kind of line, the, the line of a building, a railing, a tunnel, lighting, and so on. Number four, use a frame within a frame. For example, in this shot, I'm using the trees on either side of the frame to draw the viewer's eyes towards the subject walking up the hill, namely myself. You could use a door or window or an arch or maybe a hole in the fence. Just get creative. Now, focal point or no focal point? I think we're definitely going to keep focal point on our cinematic shot list. Now, do you use tilt shots a lot? I think it's one of those shots that maybe we don't use as much as we could. The pan shot is kind of one of the most instinctive shots, but the tilt shot maybe not so much. But 
Is it cinematic? Well, cinematographers often use this shot to show two points of interest. For example, in this shot from the Avengers, we see the door open and then we see the character's boots and then the camera tilts up to show the character's face. So you might think this is a pretty simple shot. Nothing that we should really get excited about. But when you break it down, you can see that it's actually doing a number of different things here. First of all, it's a reveal shot with the door opening, but not everything is revealed because in fact, there's two reveals. When the door opens, we only see the boots. So this shot is kind of teasing us and then the camera tilts up to reveal who these boots belong to. So there's actually two reveals in this very simple tilt shot. So we might ask ourselves, why didn't they just use a wider angle and show the whole door in one shot and it would have been much easier. And the reason that they didn't do that is because that shot would have been much less intriguing for the audience. By using a tilt shot to create a double reveal, they keep the audience guessing. But why do we need to keep the audience guessing? Well, because that's how stories work. Storytelling is about giving the audience information step by step. And how you reveal that information is basically the craft of storytelling. Now, if we want to make a tilt shot a little bit more cinematic, we can combine it with another movement. Just like we did with the pan, we can push forward and tilt up at the same time, for example. So if you're using a gimbal or a pocket camera, say, then what I usually do is use the mode that allows you to tilt the camera. So that'll be follow mode if we're using a zoom in. So now we can tilt. But if you prefer to use the control stick, you can do that too. It's up to you. I just find that using the follow mode and then you just turn the gimbal slowly. So if you push forward and then tilt up, that's what I find works best for me. Yeah, something really exciting happened a few days ago. I got a last minute call to go and give a filmic pro lesson to um, Sally Potter. I don't know if you know Sally Potter. She's like a very well-known uh, British film director. Uh, she's worked with the likes of Tilda Swinton and Johnny Depp even so, and many other names as well. And it was a really big thrill to meet her after following her for all these years as well. It also shows you that this uh, smartphone filmmaking is, uh, there's no kind of limit to it really, where you can go with it. Um, I'm just a guy with a Samsung like you guys or an iPhone. So if you do want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, or if you just want to chat about a particular project you're working on, or maybe a piece of kit that you're interested in, you can always join me on Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.